everyone, welcome back to ASX Market Watch and charting trend signals around the world. I just wanted to do a video update because it's been so long and I miss you guys a lot. <laughs> um, but plus, you know, over the last 6 to 12 months, we've just had such a great run and, um, and I've actually been trading, heaven forbid that I actually trade myself, you know. <laughs> um, those who teach can't do as well, can they? Um, but it's been fantastic. Uh, apart from that, you know, the market's come off the boil recently, as you are probably well aware. And, um, and that's a great opportunity for me to do a, a new video and just show you where I'm up to in my own trading, also where the world is up to, just my own personal analysis. It's not very difficult stuff. Um, but, you know, I guarantee you there'll be some great new pearls of wisdom in here as well. One of those being, um, Dan Zanger currently has his has a new pattern that he uses. He's on, he's at chartpattern.com. Um, he turned $10,000 into $42 million in the internet boom in the late 90s. Great guy, stand-up guy, um, and puts in the hard yards. I highly recommend his work. Um, he has a thing called the frozen rope. Now this frozen rope is uh, is just like really low volatility upward upward momentum. Um, so in other words, it looks like a frozen rope. And when it snaps, um, as it does here and as it does here, then um, then the market tends to fall away fairly quickly and fairly dramatically, um, as you might do if you were attached to the end of a frozen rope, for example. <laughs> so we'll go into that in more detail because that's showing up around the world as well. Um, this is where I was at with the All Ordinaries. And, um, and as you're probably already aware of as well, the Australian dollar, obviously that's been going down. Uh, it's, it's gone down quite significantly, I think 10% or more, which is massive for a currency. It's just huge. Um, now, when that happened, obviously there are a lot of overseas investors that needed to get out of the Australian dollar and subsequently out of their trades as well, if they were invested in the stock market. So that started to happen um, on this particular bar. Starts well on its highs, ends well on its lows. That bar by itself is a very nasty bar and you know that would be a warning sign to me because it happens over around 2% as well. You know, you might get a down day that, that happens just over, you know, half a percent or one percent. That's not so bad. But when it happens over two percent, that's that's a bad sign. So you want to be really alert there. I would have actually stayed in the market at that point, except that it actually happened again the next day. <laughs> so when that happened, I was like, damn, time to start moving my stop losses up and, uh, you know, protecting the money, protecting the trades. Um, since then, obviously, the market has had its little zigzag pattern down, and the market then has fallen away since that point. Um, now, just another few things of note um, on the All Ordinaries here. Get rid of that one. Um, really quickly, obviously, it's closed above its its trend line, uh, clo closed below its trend line, so another bad sign on the All Ordinaries. It's currently sitting on its long-term trend line, you might expect to find just a little bit of consolidation or oscillation around that trend line point. Um, so yeah, that, that's definitely something that that could be that we could be looking at. Now, apart from that, um, when it if it does move back up, there's just one more thing that we need to be wary of, and that is the um, the big round number 5,000 on the All Ordinaries right here. Um, that is now resistance. So we will, the market, as you can see, has been oscillating around that number, um, as I said on Twitter probably two or three months ago, um, that, yeah, that's what I would expect is the market to actually oscillate around that, that level. And, yeah, that's exactly what's happening. But now that is going to be resistance um, at that point there as well. So a big psychological number on the All Ordinaries. Um, really quickly, uh, if we're looking at the individual sectors as well, this is just something that I've done up. Um, healthcare, telecommunications, and consumer discretionary are really the only strong sectors left on the All Ordinaries at the moment. So that one we're looking at consumer discretionary, and even that's starting to fall away, but it's still just above the levels that I look at um, and the relative strength compared to um, the market. Healthcare is holding up nicely. Um, it's a fairly defensive sector. And telecommunications... Um, this one here has been doing great over the last two years, even though it's starting to fall away now. Um, it's still just above the levels that, that I look at as well. But that's about three sectors out of 15 or 15 odd sectors. Um, and so that's not a lot of strength out there in the markets. Worst case scenario, you'd be in materials. 
Um, and again, so materials dropped away very nicely over the last three months and is still dropping away <laughs> now there as well. So that's basically where we're at. Um, there are other ones that are that are still performing decently, but they're not above the levels that I look at, and they're not performing as well comparatively to the All Ordinaries. Um, so that's that's the Australian market. Looking at my own personal trades, the ones that have performed the best have um, have really been the ones that I've held since the beginning of the move. Now, we started to get signals of the move in June, July, August, um, but since that point, obviously, with, uh, with AMP, got a nice... Uh, post earnings announcement drift and just recently exited the stock so again you know a decent move upward plus a couple of dividends in AMP um, Charter Hall was a, just a beautiful move and only just re recently exited that stock as well um, but that was just a fantastic breakout entry from that one around August as well when the market started to move um, Seek where do you think the entry was here Yep, that's right. Exactly right there. And what happens? Ba -ba 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 Bam! <laughs> How good is that? Recent exit around the ten dollar level for myself personally. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's just really great news. Not all of them have been good. Obviously, um, you have to take the good with the bad. I had a breakout in platinum uh, management, and what happened? Sort of a week later. It, uh, it fell away again. And I just exited. It's very simple. Um, you know, you have your stop loss in, you protect your profits and you protect your capital at all costs. Um, a recent breakout, actually a couple of weeks ago, was QBE and only recently, you know, you'd definitely be out there. I was out a little bit earlier just because of the overall market weakness as well. Um, but yeah, that again was just a short-term winner. Others haven't been so good. Um, I've got Southern Cross Media, did have a breakout and what happened a couple of days later stop loss exit <laughs> so that's just trading you know it's all probabilities I only win probably about 50% of the time but the point is that that my loss is that while my gains are something like that so that's the difference and that's how that's where the money is made guys very, very simple stuff uh, where else are we at let's have a quick look at the world indices as well. The Nikkei, the beautiful, beautiful Nikkei, um, a lot of talk about this recently. And this is another example of Dan Zanger's frozen rope. Yep, how good is that? Isn't that just, just low volatility, moving upwards like a frozen rope? And then even further, it actually, um, it even increased in velocity right at the end, which is what happens. It's called a parabolic move. Um, and when that happens, the frozen rope broke, and as you, you can see it, you can see the snap, you can see, you know, so to speak, the metaphorical snap, you can see it happen. Um, obviously, yeah, that again, and again, isn't that similar to the All Ordinaries that I spoke about? A big down day starts on its highs, ends on its lows, goes more than 2%. In fact, um, I don't know how big that was, I think it was 7% or something like that. It was actually really quite a horrendous day, but that is, you know, that's the sign, that's the signal, you know, or a big part of it anyway. That was a, a, a snapping of the frozen rope, and has the market continued down? Absolutely. Absolutely it has. Really quickly, the FTSE, no, the S&P 500, no problems in America, because those guys have got money coming out the wazoo, buying things up minor, minor sort of frozen rope channel scenario here, but not really. Um, you'll know when it snaps again because it'll close below that trend line, below 1600. And yeah, really no dramas in the, in the S&P 500. There's money just floating around everywhere, so they've got no dramas, um, even despite their economy not being the best. Um, the FTSE, what I'm looking for here is a close below uh, 6300. Very simple. And that is... As you can see, it's closed below its trend line already. However, the flat trend line is what we're looking for when we're looking for the market to really break down. Um, things will get quite nasty if that happens. So that's just something to be very mindful of because it means that that's the point where people start to get really afraid. Stops start to get hit at all these different levels as well. So there, there, 
and then you know like moving average levels and that sort of thing and this one as well so stops will start to get hit that's when you know the carnage starts to happen so just be very mindful of those flat um, trend lines when they're broken that's just what you're sort of looking out for and last but not least the Shanghai Composite Shanghai Composite uh, still in a downtrend and really um, yeah there's not much more to it it tried to move up that's that's not an uptrend it's not long enough for me um, however if the market does move up over over 2300 that would be an uptrend for myself but yeah there's a lot of resistance there guys so Shanghai still in a downtrend started in March 2013 um, and apart from that that's the world from the chartist's point of view I hope that's helped in some small way uh, and you know like hope your tr own trading is going really well and you're keeping an eye on the markets it's just a great pastime and I hope this is sort of added to your own personal anal analysis as well guys have a great week and uh, happy trading until next time I meet you bye for now